Hi YouTube. All right, and I've tried to script this thing about five different ways, and I haven't been satisfied really with any of them. So I'm just going to try the direct approach, because I can I can hear people in these other scripts going, "Get to the secret." So here's the secret: it's water. A little background. Pros don't use the little machines like we rent or buy in the big box stores. They don't read the directions on the package. Well, most consumers probably don't either. The difference is the pros know how, listen carefully, how to get a carpet clean. There's a difference between cleaning a carpet and getting a carpet clean. We think in terms of a carpet cleaner. Something else is going to do this thing. The professional knows that's not how it works. They know they're going to get the carpet clean. It's about them doing it. So among us, there are a few people, the pros, who know how to get a carpet clean. And the rest are essentially doing what they're told. The secret is what moves people from one group to another. Not knowing the secret keeps you in the many group of people who don't know what they're doing. Learning the secret or knowing the secret moves you over into the other group. Okay, Rich, the secret is water. Newsflash, water isn't a secret. Exactly. It's right in front of you. It's in plain sight. What isn't obvious to know how to use the water. So let's run through a scenario here. If you've ever had occasion to clean a carpet, you probably went to the store, rented a machine, or maybe maybe you bought a machine and a, one of those bottles of cleaning solution. Poured the solution in the tank and then you filled the tank with water. Then you turned it on and started slogging up and down the carpet and you kept repeating the process until you'd gone over the whole carpet. Ah, <laughs> done, all done. Return the machine and admire your clean carpet. Is it clean? Well, no, it's not. If you did what most people do, it's probably filled with cleaning solution that will attract dirt and mat the carpet down like so much hair gel. What you did was what intuitively you thought you should do but you didn't actually know what it was you were doing. Since carpet machines are designed to be intuitive, I'm a designer, I know this kind of stuff, I design things so it's easy for people to use them because we know that people generally tear open the package, pull out the thing, and don't read the directions. They don't have time for that. They want to get to the toy and play with it. And it's just a, a product of human nature. That's just how we operate. So we try and design things taking that into consideration. People take things out, open things up, fill things to the marks, and then they wheel away on the carpet. Weeks, or maybe if you're careful, a month or two goes by, and the carpet looks worse than it did before. And so you forget this DIY stuff and call a professional carpet cleaner. If they know what they're doing, you don't call them again for quite a while. Why? Because they know how to get a carpet clean. We've said this before. That's their secret. How do they do it? They approach the task the same way you and I could have. They think about cleaning something familiar, something they're used to cleaning. And then they apply the same principles to the task at hand, getting a carpet clean. Let's look at a familiar thing. Let's say washing your hands. We're doing a lot more of that these days. Okay, hands. A little soap, rub-a-dub-dub. -dub. Oh, and what's this? Rinse. The professional carpet cleaners know this. So the secret is water and what you do with the water. The water gets the carpet clean. It rinses out the soap. It rinses out the dirt in the carpet. 
and the process of the extraction machine sucks all that stuff out of the carpet. Let's go back to your hands for a second. What if you just soaked up your hands and then dried off? Clean, right? How about your hair or your body? Lather up your hair, lather up your body, and now just uh, towel dry and uh, you're clean, right? So there you have it. It's right there in plain sight. Water. The question is if it's been known for decades how to get a carpet clean, why hasn't anybody clued us in? <laughs> what's, what's going on there? Why haven't the people that made the machines clued us in? Well, they sort of have. It's sort of in their instructions. They can pretty well predict that most people aren't going to know what they wrote down. Now, <clears throat> the people that manufacture these machines, it takes quite a bit of effort to make a machine. You know, you've got uh, die casting, you've got plastic injection molding, you've got parts, you've got assembly, you've got to test them. You, there, there's a lot going on there. They have to sell it for kind of a thin profit line. On the other hand, they bottle cleaning solutions by the thousands in these little bottles that they sell for a lot of money. Well, where they might be making double their money on one of those machines, I doubt it, but let's give it the benefit of the doubt, they're making between 1,500 and 2,000% on that bottle of cleaning solution. So the more of that that you use, the more money they're going to make. They're only going to make money on the machine once. In fact, they could almost give you the machine and just sell you this cleaning solution. Kodak did it. They did it with a camera called a brownie camera. There are probably people watching this that, that aren't even aware of the fact that cameras used to have a roll of film in them. So Kodak would uh, give away a camera so you would buy film to put in it to take pictures. They didn't care about the camera, they cared about processing the film. You take the pictures, you send the roll into the drugstore or wherever, and a few days later it comes back with the pictures that you took. It, <laughs> it's hard to believe that there aren't people that know that, but I, I realize that's the case. So, these people making the machines, they make a lot more money on solution than they do on the machine. Their goal is to sell you a lot of solution. And like I said before, professionals, they, they don't read directions. They learn how to do something. They have to buy solution, so they're going to use as little as necessary to get the job done because it cuts into their profit if they buy more solution or use more than they need. Things have changed in the marketplace. What's driving the change? Well, what's changed is the machine makers have, re, have redesigned the machines. And you might say, well, that costs a lot of money. Why would they do that? They weren't selling machines. People weren't getting acceptable results. And so these machine sales were down. Carpet cleaning professionals probably enjoyed this because when people get lousy results from something they look for better results so in order for machine manufacturers to stay in business continue selling machines solution the, the manufacturers redesign the machine so now they have a little tiny reservoir of solution and they have a big tank that you fill up with water that's leading in the right direction, isn't it? And they have a little trigger mechanism in their controls that apply solution and then rinse. Oh, that's never been there before, has it? We haven't seen that on older machines. Why? Because it's a matter of survival for the companies that build these machines and sell those solution. I can't wait for the next phase where the manufacturers are going to make so-called smart carpet cleaning machines. <laughs> oh yeah, I just love that term, smart. A long time ago, 
someone would get a slap in the face and they'd say, ooh, that's smart. Well, sometimes it's kind of a slap in the face. I sometimes get the feeling that manufacturers are having a little tongue-in-cheek fun making machines smarter to compensate for maybe what they perceive as dumber users. <laughs> anyway, will this have a negative effect on professional carpet cleaning people? No, it will not. Why? Because people with know-how, people who know how to do something, they will find a way to continue and grow and uh, reinvent themselves. People without know-how will remain lost. Now, there are links in the description below to all the shiny new uh, technologically advanced whiz-bang machines. So if you are so inclined to buy one that has the tiny reservoir, the big tank, the controls that allow you to select wash or rinse, etc. They're right there. You can you can go buy one. And there are people that love having the latest whiz bang gadget. That's fine. That's great. But of course, there's another option other than paying the much higher price for this new technology. Now that you know the secret of getting a carpet clean and that it's as easy as washing your hands, you could simply use any machine to get much better results than you ever got before. And on top of that, you can actually have a clean carpet. That's it. <laughs> I'm not sure how this video is going to go together because I haven't edited it yet. I'm, I'm recording it. But, man, I'll tell you. Uh, th it gets a lot of fire boiled up inside of me because I spent the bulk of my life in the advertising business. And why I say that, it, where am I going with that? Well, I know the drill. I know exactly how to manipulate uh, bend and weave and control perception, make impressions. Uh, I, I could do it uh, disreputably. I could do it underhanded, smoke and mirrors, etc. because it's done every day all the time. It's done to you constantly. You're pummeled with it, bombarded with it, carpet bombed with it. So this is something that we see around us all day, every day. And I could have been part of that. I chose not to and do things differently. I'm very happy I did. I sleep very good at night. The point here is that we are in a big group of people that are a target market. We're a target. And people are doing things, saying things, printing things, publishing things that have no basis in reality or fact or truth. And yet we think we're operating with knowledge, like we know what we're doing. We, in fact, we most of the time don't. Um, is it scary? No. It's just something you have to be attentive to and pay attention and try the best you can to educate yourself, learn, grow, and... Definitely, you know, if you got a little pamphlet with something, open it up and read the directions. There might be something in there <laughs> that's really going to change the game for you. That's it. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you think it would help somebody else, please share it with them. If you would like to get more content like this, then subscribe and ring the bell and you'll be notified when new content gets posted. Thank you for watching this video and all the videos on this channel. And as always, comment as you see fit. Till the next video, see you later.